Good afternoon. Get ready for Addicted to Real Estate Radio. I'm Phil Falcone with my co-host. Let me repeat that. Co-host. Jeremy Ricci and Larry Steinhaus here on WWDB 860 AM every Thursday from 3 o'clock to 4 o'clock. If you want to ask us a question or if you have a real estate need, give us a call at 267-988-2000. Who is addicted to real estate? Well, we're full-time addicted real estate investors. Do you have a house you're looking to sell? Don't forget to give us a call. We love to buy houses. Uh, do you have one that you're looking to sell as uh, having an agent represent you? We can help you with that, too. We have three agencies. It's called Addicted to Real Estate Agency. We have one in Montgomeryville, one in Happer, and one in Huntington Valley. We also do investor and realtor education meetings every month. Go to AddictedToRealEstate.com. Make sure you put your name and email address in, and you will get an invitation to one of our next education meetings. Addicted to real estate.com. So, how are my co hosts doing today? <laughs> You're not going to stop with that. By the way, everybody should know that for the last week, I've gotten emails in the definition of co host. I've gotten Phil say, are you really upset about me calling you co-host? I mean, it's been a it's been a wild week just being called a co-host by Phil. And you know, I want you to understand that you all need to understand that we finally understood that the three of us are equal. And Phil has said it, and I can't believe Phil has said someone is equal to him. Well, I meant equal during this radio show. Oh, no, 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 that makes more sense. <laughs> but you know, I got something else that's bugging me. I got you guys are all on Facebook. I'm on Facebook, and by the way, anybody out there wants to connect us on Facebook too. And you know, we got this big thing going on between Donald Trump and Bernie Sanders. I'm not going to tell you which side of the fence I'm on, but I am going to talk a little bit about how these people are holding up signs and saying they want minimum wage of fifteen dollars an hour. There's you a know? fence. What? I'm sorry. There's, you said what side of the fence? There, there's a fence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you stop think, that. You think there's like a divide or something? Going oh, there's on? definitely a divide. <laughs> but anyway, the people holding up these signs, fifteen dollars an hour. You know, I've joked before and I've said, you know, they're holding up signs saying they want to give Larry Steinhouse more rent. But you know, here's the real reality. And here's the real problem. If they're holding up signs to say we want fifteen dollars an hour, they're limiting themselves. They literally should be holding up signs. I want two hundred thousand dollars a year. Why would they limit themselves and say $15 an hour? And I'm not joking now. I'm, I'm being totally serious. This is a mindset. Stop the mindset of living on minimum wage and start doing things like investing in real estate. What do you think, Phil? I mean, how, these people... When I said how you're doing, Larry, I meant how you doing, man. I, I, I'm upset. Say, I didn't I'm say upset open up these a whole people. can of worms about minimum wage argument. This is a real estate show. You must have watched it. So these people, these people, they want to get minimum wage, and, they, and all they have to do is invest in real estate, and they can live their life like we live our life. They might even do a radio show. <laughs> you must have been watching a YouTube video or something before you came here today. I don't know. Chiming in on <laughs> well, minimum wage out of, the, out, of the, at the, out of the gate here, you know. You know, yeah, I can, I can. We can do a whole show on economics. And, we should. Uh, we should do next week's show on economics and how people should can make more money on real estate than they can at making minimum wage. Okay, sure. you you write the script for that show. I'm going on vacation. <laughs> hey, Jeremy, what uh, what are we going to be talking doing? about I'm doing today? Right. <laughs> <laughs> what are we going to be talking about today, Jeremy? Well, as always, we have questions. If you have questions, you can email them to Phil at addictedtoRealEstate.com or for short, Phil at a two r e dot com. Or addicted to real estate. We have a few questions here. I was at one of your meetings and I heard you talk about net solution based offers. Can you please explain that some more? So we'll go over that. We uh, we often are very thoughtful about the offers that we make and we'll we'll discuss how we do that. We're not the low ball cash offer guys. So second question: What is wholesaling? Some of you may have that question. Heard about wholesaling houses? I remember starting the business and and having somebody say to me, that's a retail deal, and I didn't know that there was anything different than a retail deal. So uh, we'll talk about wholesaling a little bit. And this is great. I'm 18 and finishing high school. I want to get into property investments and own property. What's my next step? So that's the questions for today. Our main topic, how to buy houses without selling your soul to the banks. That'll be fun to talk to about. stinking banks. Yeah, selling your soul to the stinking banks. That used to be your nickname, right? <laughs> stinking what, Banks. What was your nickname? It was, it was uh, Jeremy, we don't need no stinking banks, Ricci. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah that's good. That's good. <laughs> Mine was uh, Phil. Philly Phil. No, Phil, Mr. Addicted to Real Estate, Falcon. We need a nickname for Larry. How about Larry, never keeps to the script Steinhaus? <laughs> <laughs> How about that? All right, what else do we got? We got anything else we're going to talk about today? The last time you were going to talk about your price with my terms, buying houses with, with payments that your tenants can afford and how right. to pay more for houses than the, than the guy that walks in the door before you. Yeah, that's a great topic. So if you can hang around to the end of the show, we're going to discuss something of great value to you real estate investors out there. Stick around as we discuss uh, these topics and much, much more. You're listening to Addicted to Real Estate Radio, and we'll be right back. As a real estate agent, you know that most people buy a house once every seven years. Imagine working with clients that buy seven houses every year. At Addicted to Real Estate, they teach you how to work with investors because they are investors. Located in Montgomeryville, Hatboro, and Huntington Valley, work at an agency built for investors, buy investors, and finally learn how to invest yourself. Addicted to Real Estate Agency. Call them now, 215-321-SELL. 215-321-SELL. Stand this traffic. I need a vacation. Slip away to Siesta Key in Sarasota, Florida. You can stay at one of our vacation rentals at the number one rated beach in the United States. Check out GoSiesta.com where you can rent a fully furnished vacation rental for less than the cost of a stinking hotel room. Check out GoSiesta.com or call 863-2-SIESTA. That's 863-2-SIESTA or GoSiesta.com. GoSiesta.com or call 863-2-SIESTA. I'm going. Hi, my name is Phil Falcone. I wrote a book called Addicted to Real Estate, Why I Can't Stop and Why You Should Start. And if you'd love to see an investment book written by a Philadelphian about investing in Philadelphia, I'm your man. You can check out my book at addictedtorealestate.com with the number two. I have a free web TV show there. I have free investment forms for real estate investors. And I have my book that you can check out, Addicted to Real Estate, Why I Can't Stop and Why You Should Start. And the website is Addicted to Real Estate with the number 2.com. Hi, I'm Larry Steiners, and I'm addicted to real estate. Have you been thinking about getting your real estate license? Well, have I got news for you. We are currently training new agents to be addicted to real estate. If you are tired of your day-to-day, paycheck-to-paycheck life, I will pay for your real estate school and your license. Become addicted to real estate on me. Hurry before we change our minds. Call me at 215-378-9190. That's 215-378-9190. Call now, 215-378-9190. I'm Phil Falcone from Executech Suites. Do you have a voicemail machine answering your business calls during the day? Oh, please tell me it's not true. I have an answering service for you that only costs $99 a month. We're real humans. That's right. We have live humans answering the phone in the name of your company and patching the calls to you for only $99 a month. And there are no contracts, so you can try it out anytime you like and cancel it whenever you like. Executech Suites, 215 942 I'm Phil Falcone from Executech Suites. I got a question for you. What do you get for $4.95 a month at Executech Suites? You get an office big enough for one person. You get the furniture in that office. You get the telephone on the desk. You get the telephone number. You get the fax number. You get the internet. You get two full time receptionists to answer the phone in the name of your company and patch the calls to you, whether you're in the office, in your car, or at home sleeping on a couch. You get the conference rooms, you get the mailboxes, you get the printer, the copy, the scanner, you get the janitorial service, the utilities, and free coffee. I know it's hard to believe that you could get all those things for $495 a month, but it's true. 67 Buck Road in Huntington Valley, Executech Suites. Give us a call, 215-942-7701, 215-942-7701. Welcome back to Addicted to Real Estate Radio. That was right off the script, wasn't it? Oh, Larry. Larry, Larry, Larry. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't resist. Hey, Jeremy, tell us about the questions this week. So our first question, essentially, what is a net solution-based offer? We talk about this as a, a different way to make offers versus the uh, the low-ball cash offer guys, really. So net solution-based offer, we're, we're really talking about getting to know the sellers and know what they're – what their situation is and how you can help solve their situ- situation. Provide it, be a solution provider. You're not a salesman. You're a buysman or buyswoman. 
but you're providing a solution to somebody. So you're selling your solution, and in order to cater a solution to somebody, you have to find out what they what they need, what's going on in their life, and how you can help them. I look at negotiating as totally different than the uh, you know banging heads together, offer counter offer offer counter offer. I look at it as negotiating like negotiating a mountain. How can I I belay you and you belay me and we both get to the peak uh, and reach our goal? And if you can make offers in that with that mindset, I think your clients will appreciate it and you'll get much better deals. So what do you mean by that? So so if we have someone who's let's say they have a house that's worth two hundred thousand and they owe two hundred and ten thousand, you know what, what? How would you approach that? So each each situation is different, and most of the deals, the opportunities that you'll find out there are in the people, not necessarily in the real estate. In, in other words, somebody has an issue, a problem, they have an un, unfortunate circumstance, or they have an uncomfortable circumstance, like, hey, I just had triplets, and now my two-bedroom house isn't going to work anymore, or I just had my kids move out, and we have this big five-bedroom, and now it's just the two of us. So it's finding those unwanted houses, or those houses that met their needs for the people for a long time, and then they and then they no longer do. Or maybe it's for a short time, like the situation that you provided. Somebody just bought a house. It sounds to me like they either just refinanced right, or just sure. bought a house or whatever, yeah. where they owe what it's worth. And a lot of times, people like that, you have to ask them questions, probing questions to find out. But a lot of times, people just want debt relief. They're not necessarily looking to get rich off of it. So you have a $210,000 lien against the $200,000 house. You can't go in there and say, I'll give you a lowball cash offer of... 120 grand. Yeah, it just <laughs> doesn't they work. can't accept it. Right, and if you exactly. didn't think enough to ask, what's the financing on the property? How much do you owe? Are you willing to sell the property for what you owe on it? What's your goal here? Find out what their goals are and give them a an offer that caters to their goals at the same time is good for you and makes you makes you money. You guys have like one of my favorite stories that you tell, which is the the house where the the guy was older and he was he was afraid that he was going to die and leave his wife this property. Can you guys talk about that? Because I think that's the best net solution offer I've ever heard anybody come up with. No, I don't want to talk about that. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Me either. I don't want to talk about it. Well, I'll give you an example. The first, this, this is, um, you know, this is a pretty simple example. The, I had a guy who, um, had an office, had, had a, a shoe repair shop and, he had wanted to sell the shoe repair shop, and I was looking for an, for an office space. And one of the things that um, my qualifications were is it had to be free. I don't want to pay anything for the office space. So I looked for duplexes, like uh, up and down, where it was part commercial, part residential, or whatever. So anyway, this guy wanted $100,000 for his place, and he needed $25,000 down. I'll skip the front part of the story just to go about $25,000 down. And I asked him an important question. What do you need the $25,000 for? Because in most people's cases, they don't, nobody needs money. They need, they have a particular use for that money. What is it going to do for them? And if you ask them what that use is, so they send your kids to college. In this case, I said to the guy, what's, what's the $25,000 down you need for? And he said, well, I, I work on, I used to work on uh, shoe repair, but now I make Civil War replica leather goods. And he sells them on eBay or something like that. So I said to him, well, if I just, chop this store in half and I work out of the front of, I I have my office out of the front of the store and you can keep your machines in the back of the store and we'll just share a bathroom. Does that solve your, your, is that solve your, is that a good net solution for you? Is that a good, you know, solve your problem? He said, well, if if you, if I can still work out of here, then I don't need the $25,000 down. So that was, you know, a sigh of relief because I didn't want to put $25,000 down. I was probably about 24,000 light at the time. (laughs) So, so, uh, (laughs) <laughs> so I gave him a thousand dollars down. For the, <laughs> I gave him a thousand dollars down for the place, and I financed ninety nine thousand, and I had monthly payments that my tenants could afford. And it was a it was a retail duplex. I had a retail tenant on one side that would pay the entire mortgage payment, and it left me to pay the rest of it, which was zero. Right. So that it, it solved my problem, and it gave him some income that he wanted in order to pay for things that he needed, like a car, insurance on his house insurance for the rental car or for his uh, leased car and it gave him all those those net solutions we, we when you can when you can talk about something other than money you're really talking to people's goals like you know if you're if you can say what is selling this house do for you you can get into some of the finer details and how can you provide that you know
know, for, for the seller and still make a good deal. That was a good deal on both sides. Very cool. Very cool. So what was the next question, Jeremy? The next question is, what is wholesaling? Phil, what's your take on wholesaling? We, we 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 teach it, and we also teach people not to do it too. Yeah, so. you gotta be careful when you do it too. Oh, well, we like we like uh, we like teach you how to keep property, not just get rid of property. So. Well, what is wholesaling? It's basically uh, when you drive around Philadelphia and you see signs that say "We buy houses." Those people really have no intention of buying your house. What they have intention of is getting you to agree to a certain price writing it on a contract, agreeing to sell them a house for a certain price. And uh, then what they're going to do is they're going to sell that contract or try to sell that contract to somebody else for more money, of course. And a different individual will show up at settlement, uh, probably with the first individual that you signed the contract with, and it's an interesting way to make some money. And people do it all over the city of Philadelphia, and it's referred to as wholesaling, you know. I mean, in the end result is if your house gets sold and it's important to you to get your house sold, then those people are doing you a service. They're helping you to get your house sold. And maybe their contacts, they might have a huge list of contacts that you do not have access to, and these people are cash buyers who are going to come in and buy the house quickly. So if you're selling your house uh, and one of these people is the person you sell it to, well, then that most likely is, is going to solve your problem. If you're looking to do it as a way of earning an income, uh, you, you have to learn how to do it. And the best place to learn how to do it is at Addicted to Real Estate Agency, where we do teach people how to earn money as a wholesaler, as well as a flipper, as well as many other ways that houses can be bought. And, you know, being an agent at Addicted to Real Estate Agency, what comes with that? is we will teach you how to be a real estate investor, something you won't learn at any other real estate agency. That's pretty cool that we do that. And we had we had some great training the other day. What we had? We had uh, two dozen people in the office the other day packed in a room learning how to how to find deals like wholesale deals. But, you know, just the, the long and short of wholesaling is real simple. And, and as Phil said, you simply get a, a house under contract and you sell that contract to someone else. So you're not actually buying the house. It's not, not like buying you're the buying the house and then turning around and then reselling the house. You're actually <clears throat> selling the contract that you get on the house before you have to go to closing. So there's, it limits the amount of money a wholesaler has to put out of pocket to basically just a binder deposit. And then they turn around and, and sell it. Get under contract for sixty, turn around and sell it for sixty-five, and they make five grand. But they never actually settle in the house. They're just finding bargains and selling them to bargain hunters. So, Jeremy, do you know the difference between wholesaling and practicing real estate without a license? What's the difference? <laughs> the difference is real simple. You must, must, must have that house under contract, or you cannot wholesale it. You're going to find a lot of wholesalers will come up to you and they'll have, hey, I've got a deal on a house. And they know they can buy it for 35, and they're telling you you can buy it for 45, but they don't have it under contract. And if they don't have it under contract, that's actually practicing real estate without a license. And the real estate commission will have something to say about that, and it's probably in in a in a fine. So you're How you're a principal in the transaction. Is the, who is the real estate commission fining? They're fining the person who is wholesaling, who is the middleman. You mean the co-wholesaler? Well, that's a different story. We'll t- okay. I, I did want to bring Co- the COA wholesaling up, too. So well, how can the Real Estate right, Commission right, right. find somebody who is not affiliated with the Real Estate Commission? Well, the, uh, Do they have their own prisons? <laughs> no, but they do have... They, they have do their have, own police force? They do. Well, they have. They wouldn't call it a police force, but they have these people who go around and say, hey, you can't do that. They're, they're actually... Well, they're under the Department of State, so they, they have the full force of guns on their hip with, through the Department okay. of State, for sure. And here's the other thing, so too. They, you know, they could come around and... Okay, suppose I'm wholesaling a house. Sure. Jeremy knows about it. Jeremy tells a client of his about a house that I'm wholesaling, and he pretends as if it's his because he has the relationship with the guy. I call that co-wholesaling. You're saying that that's illegal. No, no, no. Well, it is, actually. If I get, paid, if I get, compensated, right, if get compensated for it. If I get compensated for it, I'm not, I'm not a real estate agent like the two of you guys. So if I get compensated for referring somebody a deal, even a barber that says, hey, I got a client that has a house uh, for sale, and you said you're looking for one, let me put you two together and just, you know, 
give me a give me a thousand bucks just for putting you together. That's getting paid That's right, to be right. to sell real estate without a license. Right, exactly. So, so it's and, and what I was going with Phil is you, you, you're right. You're actually taking the other step. But I'm actually saying there are people out there who say they have houses on the con- they they say they're wholesaling houses and they do not have them on the contract. But they somebody has them on the contract. Not necessarily. And what would be the point? That seems like a very ineffective business. Well, they they may have a verbal agreement with the person, but it's not it's not going to work. You got to be really careful with this. That's so, all. Well, I would I would call that no wholesaling. Yeah. Well, it's, okay. It's, as opposed yeah. to co-wholesaling. I'm sorry. I know you're very sensitive about the word co-host. I mean, I hope co-wholesaling, <laughs> co-wholesaling. isn't a, isn't a upsetting you as well. So this is something. Are we that starting again? <laughs> co- Come on, I'm sticking to the script this time. Co-wholesaling. We're talking we're talking about wholesaling is getting a property under contract and then selling that contract. But what often happens is. Somebody puts a blast out a, a property and says, "I have this house under contract," and on their buyers list might be another wholesaler that says, "Well, I'm not going to buy it, but I might have a buyer for that house." And now they're putting some other middleman in, in the middle. And what that what we call co-wholesaler has to do is they have to option that contract. They have to have some contract with the guy who has the original contract. That says I have the right to buy your contract for two grand or whatever it may be, or one half of the fee or whatever. So and they have to be a, in order to be a principal in the transaction. They have to have some sort of paper trail linking them to that original original contract. So basically, bottom line: is wholesaling a good business or a bad business? You can, you can make money. It's great. It's it's a good way to make money. It's you know you're, you're your own boss, but you need to make sure you have the paperwork right. And we have the paperwork in our buyer's briefcase that can help you out with that. Yeah. How can we get a buyer's briefcase? Come on, Jeremy. Yeah, addictedtorealestate.com. All right, let's so. get to our last question. Let's help this 18-year-old kid out. I'm 18 and finishing high school. I want to get into property investment and owning property. What's my next step? Hmm. What's my next step? To learn, my man. To learn, my young man. That's the next step. And I want to compliment this guy because if he's 18 and he wants to get into real estate, he's going to do very well for himself. He won't be looking for fifteen dollars an hour minimum wage. I had it. <laughs> if he hangs his license with us, and if he comes with us to learn about investing, he'll probably be a millionaire before he's twenty-three. I had a friend whose uh, his son was fifteen years old, and he bought a piece of real estate at fifteen, and then he figured out that he actually he, you can own real estate when you're fifteen. You just can't sell it there you go. <laughs> <laughs> because you're not you're still a minor, so you don't even have the right to sell it. So that's so, funny. So <laughs> yeah. So in forty-five seconds, what's the best piece of advice we can give this guy? Learn all you can. Cram information and, and make sure that if you learn from other people's mistakes up front so that you don't make your own mistakes is what I would say. What book should they read? I'd say you want to read Addicted to Real Estate would be the most uh, packed, filled ideas about real estate investing knowledge that you could ever read about. Who wrote Addicted to Real Estate? A guy named Phil Falco. <laughs> <laughs> what, a, lobbing softballs over here. Huh? <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, no, definitely we're, we're learn. Form, we, we, I thought we were rare form last week. We're more rare form Here's this what week. I can say to this kid. All right, what's his name anyway? Did you, you got his name off the email? Bob. <laughs> hey Bob, call me. His name's been protected. <laughs> call me. Let me mentor you. We we love you already, dude. 18 years old and and you haven't even finished high school yet, and you're. You're, you're already trying to figure out how to be a real estate investor. We love you, man. So give us a call, 267-988-2000. We're going to teach you this business. And then in five years, when you're a millionaire, we're going to have you on the show. And you'll be able to tell people how the greatest phone call you ever made in your life was the day you called Addicted to Real Estate. You might even be one of the co-hosts. <laughs> I, I thought, it sounds to me like this kid is, is holding the- a much higher standard for himself. Than just co-host. <laughs> I think he wants to be something much more important. <laughs> All right, stick around. We're going to be discussing the main topic, how to buy houses without selling your soul to the stinking banks. You don't want to miss this. You're listening to Addicted to Real Estate Radio. We'll be right back. Hi, my name is Phil Falcone. I wrote a book called Addicted to Real Estate, Why I Can't Stop and Why You Should Start. And if you'd love to see an investment book written by a Philadelphian about investing in Philadelphia, I'm your man. You can check out my book at addictedtorealestate.com with the number two. I have a free web TV show there. I have free investment forms for real estate investors. And I have my book that you can check out, Addicted to Real Estate, Why I Can't Stop and Why You Should Start. And the website is addictedtorealestate with the number two dot com. 
As a real estate agent, you know that most people buy a house once every seven years. Imagine working with clients that buy seven houses every year. At Addicted to Real Estate, they teach you how to work with investors because they are investors. Located in Montgomeryville, Hatboro, and Huntington Valley, work at an agency built for investors, buy investors, and finally learn how to invest yourself. Addicted to Real Estate Agency. Call them now, 215-321-SELL. 215-321-SELL. I'm Phil Falcone from Executech Suites. Do you have a voicemail machine answering your business calls during the day? Oh, please tell me it's not true. I have an answering service for you that only costs $99 a month. We're real humans. That's right. We have live humans answering the phone in the name of your company and patching the calls to you for only $99 a month. And there are no contracts, so you can try it out anytime you like and cancel it whenever you like. Executech Suites, 215 942 Hi, I'm Larry Steinhaus, and I'm addicted to real estate. Are you a real estate investor? Do you know the value of having a real estate license? It's awesome. You get to make even more money and get exposed to deals you probably would have missed. Well, today is your lucky day. I will pay for your real estate license. Find out more by calling me at 215-378-9190. That's right. I will pay for your license. Call now, 215-378-9190. Addicted to real estate, bridging the gap between investors and realtors. 215-378-9190. I can't stand this traffic. I need a vacation. Slip away to Siesta Key in Sarasota, Florida. You can stay at one of our vacation rentals at the number one rated beach in the United States. Check out GoSiesta.com where you can rent a fully furnished vacation rental for less than the cost of a stinking hotel room. Check out GoSiesta.com or call 863-2-SIESTA. That's 863-2-SIESTA or GoSiesta.com. GoSiesta.com or call 863-2-SIESTA. I'm going. I'm Phil Falcone from Executech Suites. I got a question for you. What do you get for four ninety five a month at Executech Suites? You get an office big enough for one person. You get the furniture in that office. You get the telephone on the desk. You get the telephone number. You get the fax number. You get the internet. You get two full time receptionists to answer the phone in the name of your company and patch the calls to you, whether you're in the office, in your car, or at home sleeping on a couch. You get the conference rooms, you get the mailboxes, you get the printer, the copy, the scanner, you get the janitorial service, the utilities, and free coffee. I know it's hard to believe that you could get all those things for $495 a month, but it's true. 67 Buck Road in Huntington Valley, Executech Suites. Give us a call, 215-942-7701, 215-942-7701. Welcome back, everyone. Real Estate Radio, we're going to talk about this segment is how to buy houses without selling your soul to the banks. And we have a couple different ways to do that. We we pride ourselves on that, actually. What so. kind of banks? Stinking banks. <laughs> Stinking yeah, banks. Yeah, I don't know. Stinking is, the, you know, that's the extent of of, of my foul language. I love, when, I love when Jeremy curses. I never curse. You know, I've tried to get him Especially mad. on the radio, I never curse. Yeah. I've tried to get him mad over the years. I tried to, but it's really hard. Oh, I've seen him mad. Well, it's interesting. Who was he mad at you? No, he was not mad at me. Who which was, is, who was he mad at? He, he was he was mad at you know just somebody he was doing business with. You know I, I you know I don't know if we I could have privy to bring it up on the radio, but but he was mad at somebody he was doing business and he was really upset. And well, it was I've the first time I've actually seen him really I, mad. I like when when somebody's really yelling at you. Now you know you're finally talking to them. You know? That's, yeah, I, I agree. Okay. It's something like last week, right, Phil? Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, something like that. How to buy houses without selling your soul to the stinking banks. Hmm. Well, we don't get a lot of bank loans around here if you haven't figured that out. We buy houses without without calling a banker. We do have a banker that we work with, but we typically work with him helping other people, people who may want to buy our houses or people who may – uh, be working with an addicted to real estate agent, we always recommend Tom Farris from First Choice Bank, and you'll hear his commercial on this show. Tom is a, a tremendous loan officer. So when we do use banks, we typically use First Choice Bank, Tom Farris. However, when we do our own real estate deals, we typically do not use banks. We specialize in buying houses with none of our own money, and typically, banks will never let you do that. If you go to a bank, 
they're going to lend you 70% or 75% or whatever the percentage is of what the uh, purchase price of the house is, and the bank will not let you use somebody else's money to make up that difference. That's something that they definitely won't let you do. They want you to use your own money, and you have to prove that you have your own money and the availability of that money before you would ever get approved for the mortgage. But the biggest problem that we have with banks is the paperwork that you sign when you go to settlement. The The paperwork is written in such a way where you're personally signing for that loan, and uh, if anything were to go wrong with that real estate deal, and things do go wrong with real estate deals from time to time, um, you could potentially lose that house as well as some other assets that you own until the bank was satisfied for the amount of money that they lent you. We do not recommend to people that you sign such documents. We recommend that you learn how to buy houses with none of your own money. And that's why we say don't sell your soul to the stinking banks. I've never bought... I've never bought a property in my life using a bank. I never got, went out and got a loan to buy a property. I, I have refinanced property. I've gotten lines of credits on property, things like that. And one of the things that that I'll mention to, to add to what you said, Phil, is that uh, the time frame under which you can buy a property and involve a bank, it, it definitely delays the period in which you can close. So if I want to close a property in five days or in two weeks – you can't get a bank to do that. I mean, unless they have a, already have a line of credit that's set up, you know, you, you can't you can't do that. So I like the speed of implementation of using private investors or some other t- type of financing, owner financing. How 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 fast can you get owner financing to happen? Well, as fast as you and the owner can shake hands and agree upon the terms. Absolutely. You and, know. And, and you know, the only limitation is the title company. The title company being able to give you title insurance and and pull the title, make sure you have a clean title. But if you're not putting any money out of your own pocket, you know, um, you know, I guess you're making payments, so you want to make sure that you have a good title. Yeah, and Phil, you you hit it also. You said you know maybe the bank will give you seventy seventy five percent if we're lucky. I mean, I find it funny that I go into banks all the time and I'm asking for for money that my net worth is more than the money that I'm asking for, and they won't even give it to me because they don't. I don't have any W two income, so they won't even give me the loan. I've heard of people that have li- liquid cash deposits in the bank, and the bank won't give them a loan for less than their liquid cash deposits. Been there, I, I know exactly what you mean. Been there, and then you know. So, and here's the other thing too. You know, seventy seventy five percent. You know, and I'll give you a great example of a great deal that I closed on last week. I bought a house. All my closing costs, everything, title insurance, um, the you know, the notary, et cetera, it cost me ninety five thousand dollars. I'm going to need to put about fifteen thousand dollars into the home to make it rentable. And the ARV is about $140,000. I borrowed $100,000 from somebody at 8% interest. And to me, this is a great deal. I mean, what's it costing me? It's costing me about $10,000. My cash flow is going to be about three to $300 to $350 a month when I'm, when I'm after I rent it. Where are you going to get $300 to $350 a month off $10,000 investment? It's fantastic. Yeah, and you... you I know oftentimes you allocate that to, let's say you have a, a car payment of $350 a month. You you just look at that as buy an asset that throws off $350 a month, and your your tenants now pay, your tenant now pays for your car. Absolutely. In, in fact, I have because I have my stuff in trust and I have different accounts of trust, I actually have each one pay a certain bill, which is kind of fun. <laughs> yeah. do, you, do you actually do that? Yeah, I do. I started doing it. I actually started to do it, which is kind of fun. You, you should start naming, I pay my home mortgage that way. You should start naming your trust after which bill you're trying to cover. Larry's vehicle trust. Right, right. There you go. Yeah, <laughs> and, then, and then your BMW your, trust. You're right. Your tenant, <laughs> your your tenant writes your che- the check out to Larry's BMW trust. Well, that, <laughs> that comes straight out of the Robert Kiyosaki book, uh, Rich Dad Poor Dad. His he was the first author that I know of who put that into a book where he said, um, "Say you feel like you want to go buy a Ferrari. That buying a Ferrari is something you must have." and Whatever. In his book, he used the example of it was going to cost $75,000. Maybe he's buying one used. I don't know. I don't think you can buy a Ferrari. For seventy five grand. It's an old book. And well, he'd say, uh, well, let's just it say, is an let's old just book. say it's $2,500 $2, a month to buy the Ferrari. Right. All right. So his so. point is go out and make a real estate deal. Go out and make a deal somehow that increases your uh, income stream by that much money. Exactly. And then there it is. Buy ten houses that each make two hundred fifty dollars a month, and now your twenty five hundred dollars a month is paid for. And maybe I don't they, think you have to buy ten houses to get a Ferrari, do you? Well, 
at two hundred fifty dollars a month. Talking about twenty five hundred. Twenty five hundred. I'm just saying it's twenty five hundred dollars a month to own that Ferrari. I mean, maybe twenty five hundred dollars is your mortgage payment, and you got to buy ten houses at two fifty a month cash flow to pay your mortgage payment. Absolutely, and then you fund those into into its own account, and then you pay the Ferrari out of that account. And right. it's, it's a lot of fun to do it that way. It really is. I mean, I, I have my mortgage. Two of my houses pay my my home mortgage. They actually they actually send money into that account, and that account pays my home mortgage. Now, there's another way that you can buy houses without selling your soul to the banks is find somebody else who's already sold their soul to the banks <laughs> <laughs> and take over their payments. And we've done that several times. Um, <laughs> it's a little risky because you, there's always a chance that the bank could call the loan due. There's uh, Most Fannie Mae mortgages have a... I'd say it's a very sale clause, risky. But it's, it's not, it's, yeah, it's not too risky in the sense that most banks, as long as they're getting paid, don't don't really care. But you do have to make sure you have the right paperwork in place and have all the disclaimers and uh, make the seller aware that hey, you know, we both have some risk here. The bank could call the loan due. Um, we had a situation where somebody filed bankruptcy and they came in with their loan payments, and now they they their soul was uh, sold to the banks and then unsold when they filed bankruptcy. So that they actually weren't personally on the hook for the loan anymore. And they turned over the house to us and said, "Here, you make the payments." Yeah, they can actually reaffirm that loan, though, which is which is which they didn't do. They didn't do. Okay, they did not. So they didn't even contact the bank saying that they didn't even notify the bank of the bankruptcy. The, the bank, they did notify the bank of the bankruptcy. They included the bank in the bankruptcy, but they continued paying it. Okay, but never reaffirmed it. So that, therefore, that would put them back on the hook for the loan after the bankruptcy, right? Right, right, yeah. exactly. So right. they didn't do that. So they have they actually have no personal obligation to the loan. That's great. However, the house has obligation to the loan right. because it's a lien against the house. And if the loan isn't paid, they can come in and, and take all the you know actions that they want to take, foreclosure, to get the house back. But we, we took over payments on that loan. It used to be that you could assume loans um, and freely assume loans. But I think the last one might have been 1987 where the VA had freely assumable without qualifying loans. Uh, these days, the only assumable loans are with qualifying, so you have to almost apply for the bank. Instead of getting right. a new loan, you say, I want to take over that loan, and you have to apply for the bank. The way we buy it is we buy it subject to the, the mortgage. So we buy the house, and we subject ourselves to the terms of their mortgage, and, but we never sign our name on the dotted line with the bank. We just make an agreement with the seller that we'll take over your payments from here. So that's another way you can do it and take over financing um, with, a, with a mortgage takeover strategy. Which is it's a great strategy and it definitely helps out people. I started out in the business doing uh, pre foreclosures and I would buy houses that might have been two, three, four months behind on their mortgage payments, and I would come in and, and make a deal with them, get all the proper documentation, and then call the bank and say I'm reinstating the loan. I'm going to be making the payments from here on out, and I would put up three, four months of their back payments, and I would start making their payments, and I would own the house at that point, and it would actually be helpful to the seller because it would get them out from under this foreclosure or and it would also uh, cr- change their credit report where it, their credit report was reporting that they weren't making their payments now all of a sudden i was making them but they were getting they were getting the uh, the positive effect of me making the payments on their loan on their credit report and i remember 2 3 years down the line after taking over the first couple of loans that i i did that back in the early 2000s and uh, getting like uh Solicitations in the mail for like credit cards, <laughs> on the you know come addressed to the oh, you've right. been pre-approved for a credit card. So I know that it actually was even helping their credit by me making the the payments. So so that's another interesting way to do it: buy it subject to a mortgage. And you got to be careful when you do it. Like I said, you make sure you have the right paperwork. Yeah, and then also if you make if you take over subject to, you have to really make those payments. You know, sure. I, my subject to people to me that's the most important payments I make every month. Because I'm affecting someone else's life. Sure. You know, and you can learn more about Subject Two by coming to our meetings. Um, you can go to Addicted to Real Estate with the number two, dot com, and you can sign up for our meetings. And you can learn more about Subject Two and how to do it. How to do it so that you will be the owner of the property and you will take over someone's payments. What are some other cool ways to acquire pay- properties? Well, we talked about owner financing. You're, at owner financing, you're dealing with human again. So. You're dealing with humans and not institutions. You have more flexibility. There's no uh, guidelines or happy meal where you say, I, "I want you know value combo number one, value combo number two, value combo number three, and the bank comes back to you and says, "What you're trying to do doesn't fit into any of our value combo boxes." Well, with a human, they can make their own decisions, and you can 
influence those decisions by showing them the benefits of doing it your way. And if they see that it's beneficial for both of you, they can agree to whatever. I, I had I, I talked earlier in the show about buying this uh, office building where I had a couple retail stores, and I knew that it was going to take me some time to fix up the property. So into the the loan, or not the loan, but into the, the promissory note and the mortgage, I wrote that I had a moratorium of payments. At the time, I didn't even know what that term meant. I didn't even know it was called a moratorium of payments. But what I just said is that my first payment to you doesn't start until six months after closing. And the whole idea was I said I needed some time to get the place fixed up and get a tenant in there because that tenant is going to be the one that's going to cover the mortgage payment. And whether or not I have a tenant in six months or not, I'm still going to cover the mortgage payment. But I wanted to know that I didn't want an immediate negative cash flow. So I built in a six-month moratorium of payments as, as I were. That's great. You know, I found out that they would call it that. How many banks would let you do that? I'm going to borrow the yeah, money right. from you for now, but I won't make my first payment for six months. Well, and even if they did, they would they would uh, they would accrue interest. Accrue the interest right, exactly, right right right, 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 right. Which is which is crazy. Yeah, I mean it's it, it's all those deals. You know, hey, you know, we talked about buying car, buying houses on credit cards a couple of weeks ago. That was kind of that's kind of neat too. Yeah, you're signing your name on the banks there. It's a little different. It's yeah, not a secured true. loan. That's but, true. But but, but uh, how about private investors, Phil? You know, we talk you going to private investors is another great way. Yeah, borrowing money off of people. Everybody knows somebody who has some money, and uh, what do the banks do? Uh, to make money, well, they lend money out, and then um, you, they you make payments to them with some kind of interest, and that's the same thing that we do with private lenders. And people say, "Geez, can I make money doing it? Doing that?" Well, I always tell them, I say, "Drive into any city. What's the biggest skyscraper you usually see? It's usually a bank, right?" That, that I don't know about you, but that's a pretty good indication from my standpoint as to lending money to people with regular payments coming back with an interest payment, uh, that's a pretty good way to make money. Banks have obviously become some of the richest organizations in our country, and they've done it primarily through that process. If you'd like to know more about the private lending uh, rules and regulations and how it all works, read the book The Banker's Code by George Anton. It's a very simple, easy book to read, and you will, uh, for $15 on Amazon, you will be quite educated on the process and then give us a call and you know, maybe we can talk to you a little bit more about it and you could learn a little bit more about it but basically you're going to somebody who who technically knows you likes you and trusts you they're going to lend some money on a piece of real estate deal they're going to lend it you're going to give them a note and a mortgage that will be the same documents that a bank would require uh, with the exception of the you know, if you can, you want to have the exception of the personal signature and the what you're basically putting at risk is the particular property that this person is lending on and nothing else. So if something goes wrong with the deal, yes, the person who put up the money should get their money back, and one way they can get their money back is by you giving them back that house. But it doesn't give them the right to come and take everything away from you until they're satisfied. And why would a private lender be comfortable without the personal guarantee? Well, they'd have to look at the deal and, and see that there's there's equity, that there's opportunity, and that there's profit to be made off of this deal one way or another. Let's just say it's a flip. They'd have to be comfortable with that. And here's the real difference. If I get a $150,000 house that's worth $150,000 today, but I get it for hundred grand, a bank will lend me 70% of the hundred grand. Where a private investor will say, "Hey, I get it. This thing is worth 150 grand. I'll happily lend you 100 grand. I might even lend you a little bit more, okay? Because you're dealing with people, they're willing to do to do things that are negotiable. Each side can negotiate for themselves the best deal that they can get, and hopefully everybody gets what they want, and then you proceed. Where a bank simply has this rule where it's 70% of, of the purchase price. Well, what if I bought it for $100,000 under market value? The bank won't even consider that. And that's why one of the main reasons why we don't do business with banks. All right, so uh, stick around, guys, because we're going to discuss something really interesting. We're going to talk to you about how to buy houses, okay, with, your, with, the, with the seller's price but with terms that my tenants can afford to pay. And we're going to be discussing a few other things, so stick around. You're listening to Addicted to Real Estate Radio. We'll be right back. 
As a real estate agent, you know that most people buy a house once every seven years. Imagine working with clients that buy seven houses every year. At Addicted to Real Estate, they teach you how to work with investors because they are investors. Located in Montgomeryville, Hatboro, and Huntington Valley, work at an agency built for investors, by investors, and finally learn how to invest yourself. Addicted to Real Estate Agency. Call them now, 215-321-SELL. 215-321-SELL. Hi, my name is Phil Falcone. I wrote a book called Addicted to Real Estate, Why I Can't Stop and Why You Should Start. And if you'd love to see an investment book written by a Philadelphian about investing in Philadelphia, I'm your man. You can check out my book at addictedtorealestate.com with the number two. I have a free web TV show there. I have free investment forms for real estate investors. And I have my book that you can check out, Addicted to Real Estate, Why I Can't Stop and Why You Should Start. And the website is addictedtorealestate with the number two dot com. I can't stand this traffic. I need a vacation. Slip away to Siesta Key in Sarasota, Florida. You can stay at one of our vacation rentals at the number one rated beach in the United States. Check out GoSiesta.com where you can rent a fully furnished vacation rental for less than the cost of a stinking hotel room. Check out GoSiesta.com or call 863-2-SIESTA. That's 863-2-SIESTA or GoSiesta.com. GoSiesta.com or call 863-2-SIESTA. I'm going! I'm Phil Falcone from Executech Suites. Do you have a voicemail machine answering your business calls during the day? Oh, please tell me it's not true. I have an answering service for you that only costs $99 a month. We're real humans. That's right. We have live humans answering the phone in the name of your company and patching the calls to you for only $99 a month. And there are no contracts, so you can try it out anytime you like and cancel it whenever you like. Executech Suites. 215-942-7701. Hi, I'm Larry Steinhaus, and I'm addicted to real estate. Have you been thinking about getting your real estate license? Well, have I got news for you. We are currently training new agents to be addicted to real estate. If you are tired of your day-to-day, paycheck-to-paycheck life, I will pay for your real estate school and your license. Become addicted to real estate on me. Hurry before we change our minds. Call me at 215-378-9190. That's 215-378-9190. Call now, 215-378-9190. I'm Phil Falcone from Executech Suites. I got a question for you. What do you get for four ninety five a month at Executech Suites? You get an office big enough for one person. You get the furniture in that office. You get the telephone on the desk. You get the telephone number. You get the fax number. You get the internet. You get two full time receptionists to answer the phone in the name of your company and patch the calls to you, whether you're in the office, in your car, or at home sleeping on a couch. You get the conference rooms, you get the mailboxes, you get the printer, the copy, the scanner, you get the janitorial service, the utilities, and free coffee. I know it's hard to believe that you could get all those things for $495 a month, but it's true. 67 Buck Road in Huntington Valley, Executech Suites. Give us a call, 215-942-7701, 215-942-7701. Welcome back to Addicted to Real Estate Radio. Now we're going to talk about something really creative we want to share with you, okay? One of the things that we say all the time at Addicted to Real Estate Agency is your price, meaning we're talking to the seller of a house and we're saying, we will give you your price, meaning that we'll pay retail, meaning that we might even pay above retail. The perception at real estate investors are always coming in and chopping you off at the knees is an accurate perception for most real estate investors, but not for addicted to real estate. And one of the things that we do there is we say your price with our terms or with terms that our tenants can afford to pay. So, Jeremy, why don't you explain a little bit about what that means and why we're saying this? Well, the first thing is the difference in the exit strategy. When you're buying a house to wholesale, like we talked about earlier about wholesaling houses and just getting it under contract and selling it for the, a higher price, or you're, you're buying a house to, to flip, your, your, uh, Phil's messing around with his camera here. That's what all the beeping is. It's they didn't hear that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what beeping? So say cheese, Larry. So when you, <clears throat> when you're, <clears throat> <laughs> when you, when you're, <laughs> Oh, have we derailed you? Have we derailed you, Jeremy? Yeah. Right. 
What were you saying about, about the train of thought has been derailed? <laughs> no, when when you're buying a house with the only exit strategy you have is a resale, so you're fix and flip, or you're wholesaling the house without fixing it. Um, the only thing you have to negotiate is price because you're going to own it for such a short period of time. When you when you use our exit strategy, which is real estate investing, those other guys actually are not real estate investors. They're wholesalers or they're flippers. They're in the business of they're in the used house business, kind of like the used car business. They're they're buying used houses and they're fixing them up and reselling them. Um, they're dealers. They're real estate dealers. So it's kind of like day trading in the stock market versus investing in the stock market. And if, a day, a, a, a day trader isn't an investor. They're a day trader. Right. So these are house traders or whatever, what have you. When you're buying stuff for rental investment, your strategy is to make sure that the payments are low enough that you can have a positive cash flow. So you want to make sure that by the time you collect your rent, you deduct what your taxes are, what your insurance is, what other expenses. Let's say it's in a homeowner's association. You want to add that into the mix. And, you know, factor in some vacancy rates and some management and some repairs and things like that. But, And then what you have left is the amount that you can afford to pay on a monthly basis for debt service. Um, of course, you want to factor in profit, too. So let's say I have $1,000 a month in rent and I have $200 a month in taxes. I'm left with $800 a month, $50 a month in insurance. Now I have $750 left. And then I want to have $200 in profit for myself. So now I'm down to 550. So 550 is the most that I could pay a seller on a monthly basis for owner financing. So we're buying houses with owner financing. We know what we want to make. We know what the expenses are, and we just need to be, make sure that the payments are such that our tenants can afford them. We we wouldn't want to buy a house and offer the seller a thousand dollars a month and have our expenses be 1,100 a month. We'd be losing money or less. Sure. So how do you approach someone and say, well, "I'm going to give you 550 a month for your house"? When 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 they want a hundred thousand dollars for their house, I I don't, I don't understand so, how you do that. So it, let's say the house is worth eighty thousand, but the seller wants a hundred thousand. Well, the way you can do that is you can say I'll give you five hundred fifty dollars a month until paid. Now I know, and with owner financing, one of the benefits is you get much more rapid pay down on the property than you would if you got a traditional thirty year amortized loan because you you get whatever you can negotiate and typically. I just go in and say, look, it's a $100,000 house. I'll give you payments of $500 a month for 200 months. So $500 a month for 200 months is $100,000. And every month that I make a payment of $500, my the amount that I owe goes down $500. Where Typically, if you had a 6% interest loan or a 5%, you know, whatever interest rate, and you amortize that, very little of that first month's payment pays down the principal of the loan. When we negotiate seller financing, all, if not most, you know, most, if not all of that payment pays down the, the loan. So, if I understand you correctly, you're not paying interest on this loan. Yeah, we we don't we typically don't pay interest. That's and that's that's amazing. You get people to agree to that. Yeah, for, for, because I tell them your price, my terms. So, if they want retail, I can do one of two things. I could give you full retail price under uh, my terms, or I can give you. All cash, but it has to be a lower price. So it's kind of a sliding scale. It really factors into the time value of money that that $100,000 over the course of 200 payments is a lot easier to swallow than $100,000 cash today. It's a time value Makes money sense. calculation. Makes sense. Well, that's, that's actually great, Jeremy. That's a great technique and a great strategy. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to try it some more. If you have two, let's say you have two of those, you're, you're getting $1,000 in equity that you're building up every month. Get Ten of those, that's five thousand dollars of equity you're building up if you have payments of five hundred dollars a month. So five thousand dollars a month in equity you're building, that's that's phenomenal. Yeah, I think you gave the example once at a, at a seminar about uh, offering some any, anybody in the room a million dollars for their house. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So, yes, yeah, so the idea is, uh, I'll, you know, somebody says, who, who here would sell their house for a million dollars? And everybody, you know, a couple people didn't raise their hand. Maybe their house was more worth more than a million dollars. But let's say most people in the room. Would sell their house for a million dollars. I said, I'll, I'll give you a thousand dollars a month until that million dollars is paid off. Certainly, my I'm not going to pay it off. My grandkids might pay it off, or great grandkids. But if it's a nice house and it rents for fifteen hundred dollars a month, and I can give them a thousand, I'll never have equity in the home, but I'll, I'll have cash flow. 
Yeah, it's a great. It's just like a great deal. You can never sell it. You're right, but you'll you'll definitely be able to own it. It's, you'll definitely be able to make money on it. And there's a lot of ways to make money in this business. And I think that's what real estate investors need to understand: is you can make money in this business a lot of ways. It's yeah. not wholesaling only. It's not profit is one money. way, but cash flow right. is another great way. And cash flow is my my personal favorite. That's my favorite too. Yeah. What's going on with you, Phil? What's your favorite? I don't know. Uh, I think I've had it with the real estate conversation for now. Let's talk about something else. Um, I've I'm got worried. three rules in life that I like to follow. <laughs> three rules in life. I'd like to share them with people before we go off the air. Never, ever play poker with a guy who has the nickname of a city. Like if the guy's name is Milwaukee Mike, okay, or Philadelphia Phil. Yeah, I've played poker with you. I agree. Don't play poker with him, right? Never, ever make love to a woman who has a tattoo of a dagger on her arm. That's all I can warn you about. Just don't do that, okay? Wait, 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 wait. Have you? <laughs> we don't have time, Larry. <laughs> and uh, never, ever mess with people who serve you food in restaurants. Now, if you follow those three rules in life, plus all the other things that we're teaching you about real estate here, you'll be, your rest of your life will just be a cakewalk, Okay. So I just want to let you know about Addicted to Real Estate Agency. We buy houses. We edu- we have education events. We teach people how to buy houses with none of their own money. We teach people how to buy their house at the client's price but with our terms. And if you're interested in becoming a sponsor for this show uh, or if you'd like to be a guest, give us a call at 267-988-2000. Uh, we're going to have a meeting coming up in the month of April. I am Looking for a new location in Northeast Philly? If you just put your name and email address in at addictedtorealestate.com, I'll send you an invitation to our next meeting as soon as I know where and when that will be. And, of course, you heard it on the commercial. I will pay for your real estate license. If you're an investor and you want to get your real estate license, give me a call, 215-378-9190. And this is Jeremy Ricci. You can listen to our show at www.dbam.com or... 8.60 a.m. every Thursday from 3 to 4 p.m. 8.60 a.m. Thursdays at 3. Awesome show, guys. Yeah, thanks. I appreciate you coming today, Phil. <laughs> <laughs>